Hi, I'm Chris Sangster, and welcome back to the studio. Today, we're going to discuss one of the most important and perhaps most misunderstood features of Logic Pro, the marquee tool. And I'm gonna show you eight ways that it can greatly improve your workflow in Logic Pro. To start, let's define what the marquee tool is. So here in your toolbar, the marquee tool is shaped like a plus sign. And although marquee tool is a catchy name, I think it actually leads to some of the misunderstanding about what this tool really is. I like to think of the marquee tool as a super powered selection tool, as it allows you to select and edit a defined portion of the timeline. There are many ways to access the marquee tool, but there are two in particular that I recommend. The first is by setting your secondary tool here to the right of your main tool to the marquee tool. Then you can quickly access this secondary tool by simply holding down the command key on your keyboard. The second way is to turn on marquee tool click zones. This mode makes your cursor automatically turn into the marquee tool when you are hovering over the bottom half of a track. To enable this, go to the Logic Pro menu, then Settings and General. Then in the Editing tab, come down and check the tick box next to Marquee Tool Click Zones. Marquee Tool Click Zones is actually my preferred method, but for simplicity's sake, I'm going to use the secondary tool and the shortcut of holding down Command in this video. So every time I talk about switching back to the pointer tool, all I'm doing is simply letting go of the command key to return to my main tool, which is the pointer tool. Once you have the marquee tool engaged, you simply click and drag with your mouse to create a marquee selection, which is indicated by this translucent box over top of the region. If you want to change the length of the marquee selection without redoing it, just hold shift and then click and drag either side of the marquee selection to change its position. Now that we have an understanding of what the marquee tool is, let's dive into these eight powerful things it can do. Number one, the simplest way to utilize the marquee tool is for slicing an audio region. With the marquee tool, select the part of the region that you would like to slice and then switch back to the pointer tool. Then simply click inside the marquee selection. This will slice the region at the beginning and ending of the marquee selection and create a new region. This makes it very easy to make precise cuts to your audio or MIDI regions in the timeline. Note, the marquee tool follows the snap to grid mode you have selected in this menu here above the cycle. So if you want to be very precise with cutting on bars or specific beats, you can change from the smart mode to a more precise division of the timeline in this menu. Number two. Perhaps my favorite use of the marquee tool is using it to create and edit automation. For example, if I wanna automate this one note up in volume, I simply open the automation lanes with the A key on my keyboard, then with the marquee tool, select that note, then switching back to the pointer tool, I just click inside the marquee selection and drag it up to raise the volume automation. This automatically creates all of the automation points necessary to change the volume of this selection, and there's no need to manually create a bunch of automation points for this simple task. Just use the marquee tool. Number three, another great way to use the marquee tool with automation is to help you accurately and easily copy and paste automation. I'm sure some of you, like myself, have been very frustrated with how finicky logic can be with copying and pasting automation, especially when you're doing it across different tracks. But the marquee tool takes all of this frustration away. Simply make a marquee selection starting on the bar line before the automation you wish to copy and end the selection anywhere after those automation points are finished. Then hit Command C on your keyboard to copy. Then again, with the marquee tool, make a selection at the bar line before where you want to paste the automation. You can make this selection as long as you like, even a simple click to create a line will do, and then hit Command V on your keyboard to paste the automation. 
This works the exact same way if you are copying automation on one track or from one track to another. You don't even have to choose the proper automation lane first on that new track. Just start the marquee selection at the same point on the destination track as you did on the source track and hit paste. But if you're pasting plugin automation, just make sure that you've instantiated that plugin on the destination track first. However, there's no need to enable the automation lane or anything like that. Just simply select and paste. Number four, a feature that many people think Logic Pro does not have is tab to transient. This is where you can automatically select the transient of a waveform to create a precise edit point. However, Logic does have this feature, but instead of using the tab key, we use the marquee tool. Make a marquee selection starting before the transient you want to select and end the marquee selection after the hit is finished. Then hit shift and the right arrow key on your keyboard to tab to the first transient. You can also hit just the left arrow to tab to the transient at the end of the marquee selection. You can then switch back to the pointer tool and click inside the marquee selection to slice the region at this transient. Number five. The marquee tool is also very helpful for quickly repeating regions. If you just select a region and press Command R to create a repeat of it, Logic by default will start that repeated region at the end of the selected region. But what if you want the repeat to start somewhere else in the timeline? This can be especially true if you're working with drum samples where the region length is really short, like this snare sample here. In order to quickly repeat this snare and drop the repeat in two beats later, I make a marquee selection starting at the beginning of the region I want to repeat and ending where I want the repeat to start, on beat four in this case. Then hit Command R. Number six. The marquee tool can also speed up your workflow in flex time. In this bass recording, I was a beat late on this one note and I wanna just quickly shift it back to its proper position. So with flex time open and enabled on the track, I can make a marquee selection of this note and then with the pointer tool, click inside the selection on the top half of the track. This will automatically create all of the flex points needed to edit the timing of just this note, but retain the timing of the rest of the track. Then I can click out of the marquee selection and use these flex time points to drag this note back into its proper position. Just like with automation, this is so much faster than creating all of those flex points manually. Number seven. Using the marquee tool in conjunction with selection-based processing is something I find especially useful in a post-production workflow. For example, if I think this word here is a little too bassy and doesn't flow right with the rest of the dialogue, there's nothing we can do to stop this from happening. I could go through the laborious process of setting up automation on an EQ plugin, or I could select the word with the marquee tool right click and choose selection based processing. Then I can create and preview my EQ in this window and hit apply. If you want, you can choose split at marquee borders to create a new region or leave it unselected and Logic will apply the EQ just to the marquee selection but leave the whole region intact. There's nothing we can do to stop this from happening. Number eight. And finally, the marquee tool can help you zoom into a specific point in a track very, very quickly. Just make a marquee selection of the portion of the track you want to zoom in on and then hit Z on your keyboard. This will zoom to make the marquee selection take up the entire workspace. And then if you hit Z again, it returns to the previous zoom level. And there we go. Those are eight powerful things you can do in Logic Pro with the marquee tool. There are way more uses than just these eight, but if you start by mastering these, you will be so much more efficient while working in Logic Pro. I hope you found these marquee tool tips interesting and helpful. If I miss any of your favorite uses of the marquee tool, drop it in the comments below. I'd love to read them. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you at the studio next time. Thanks.